This is Nick with logosbynick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create these vector double sided arrows using Inkscape. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here with Inkscape. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. So the first thing we want to do is just set up our documents so that we're all working with a similar view and with a, uh, a similar setup. I'm going to go to File, Document Properties. Let me try that again. Document Properties, we want Display Units set to PX for pixels. We want to uh, turn off the visibility of the page border and then close out of that. And up here in the Enable Snapping menu, we want Snap snap to Cusp Nodes. We want that turned on for this tutorial. And then I'm going to open up the Align and Distribute menu with that button there. We're going to want Last Selected chosen from that drop-down. And then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button there. So uh, let, me go to, let me just go to View. We're going to want Custom Selected. Zoom in at 1 to 1. There we go. And the first thing we want to do is create a rectangle. So I'm going to grab the squares and rectangles tool and I'm going to click and drag to create a rectangle like that. A nice wide rectangle. Uh, let me get rid of that outline. If yours has, if yours ends up with a, an outline, otherwise known as a stroke, you could get rid of it by holding shift and clicking the X. So I'll just go ahead and get rid of mine. Uh, otherwise you're good to go. I'm going to take the opacity of this and bring this down about in half. Then I'm going to grab the select tool. And I want to click on this a second time till we get the rotation handles. And I'm going to hold control and grab the bottom right arrow right here and just rotate this counterclockwise. One, two, three. Three steps like that. And what I want to do now is go back to the squares and rectangles tool. And I want to create a rectangle that connects these two corners. So I'm going to start right here. And then I'll click and drag and end it at the other corner right there. And it should snap just like that. And I'm going to make that one red. And I'm going to convert that to a path by going to Path, Object to Path. Go to the Select tool. I'm going to click on this again so we get our rotation handles. And I'm going to hold Control. I'm going to take this side arrow on the right. And I'm going to bring this down while holding Control. One, two, three. Three steps like that. And then I'll just click and drag this down here until it snaps onto the bottom like that. And I'll go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. I want to click and drag over that node, that bottom node to select it, then hold shift and click and drag over this node to select that. And then just hold control and click and drag these down about that far. We want that to be about about that wide, about that that large in height. You could just eyeball it. doesn't have to be exactly that height. And once we've done that, I'll go back to the select tool. I'm going to right click on this and go to duplicate. And I'm just going to click and drag this. I'm going to take this top left corner and snap it to this top right corner of that rectangle. And I'll right click that and duplicate it again. I'll take this right corner and snap it over to this side right here. And we want this side, let me zoom in on this to show you. We want this side to extend all the way down into there. We don't want this being cut short like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And I'm going to hold Control and just click and drag that node so it goes down into that black rectangle. And what I'll do next is I'll go back to the Select tool. I'll click on that original rectangle we created. Right click that, go to duplicate, hold shift, click on the red shape right here and go to path difference so that we end up with a shape like that. And what I'll do now is I'm going to grab the Bezier pen, which is over here, or you can press B on the keyboard. And I'm going to create a shape that connects these four corners together. So I'll start at this corner, wait till the cursor snaps and then click, bring the line up here to this corner and then click back over here and then back to the starting point like that. And I'll just make this one blue for now. I'll get rid of that black outline by holding shift and clicking the X. And I'll bring the opacity of that down about in half. And next we're gonna create the head of the arrow right here. So to do that, I'm gonna grab the squares and rectangles tool. I'm gonna to snap to this top left, to this top point right here. Then just click and drag and snap to this point over here like that. And what I'll do now is I'll go back to the Bezier pen I'm going to snap to this corner and snap to this corner, cut straight across like that and finish the shape coming around the outside. Go to the select tool, hold shift, click on the uh, our, our square that we just created and go to path difference. And let me just make that black so it matches this rectangle right here. And I'm actually going to unify them together. I'm going to hold shift and click on that rectangle and go to path union. So they're now unified together as like a single unit, a single uh, arrow shape. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create the bottom portion of the arrow. But let me just zoom out. I'm going to zoom out by holding control and rolling down the mouse wheel a couple of times just so I can have a better view of this. I'm going to select this arrow here and I'm going to hold shift and select this little red piece right there. I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate. And then I'm going to flip that vertically and then horizontally using these buttons. Or you could just use H and V on the keyboard. And I'll take this down here. I'm going to take this corner and, oops, I'm going to go ahead and snap it right in there like that. And what I'll do now is I'll click and drag over everything. And I'm going to take this right arrow and just click and drag that out like that. And you can bring the opacity of it all the way up. And you can see we have the structure of the entire shape. Like the design is pretty much completed. What we just have to do now is color it in and add uh, an outline around it. So let me click off of that to deselect everything. I'm going to take this blue shape in the middle right here. I'm going to make that yellow. And under the Fill tab, using the HSL tab, I'm going to take this L, this L row, and slide that to the right a little bit to make that a very light shade, almost like a tan color. I'll click on this black arrow. Hold shift, click on the other black arrow, and then choose a shade of light blue down here, maybe something like that. That's good. And then I'll click on the red pieces, holding shift to click to select all four at the same time, and I'm going to make them a shade of pink. Maybe I'll go with a shade like that. And then finally, what I'm going to do is click and drag over everything to give it an outline. With everything selected, I'll hold shift and click on a shade of brown to give that an outline. And what I want to do now is come over here to the Stroke Style tab, and where it says Width, we want to change this from Percentage to PX. If yours is already set at PX, you're good to go. With my installation, for whatever reason, it defaults to Percentages. Uh, for the Width, I'm going to change this to maybe 5, or now I'll go with 15. Uh, yours will vary based on the... Um, based on how big you made the object, which pretty much depends on what kind of uh, resolution you're working with as far as your monitor goes. For you, maybe 5 will work. For me, 15 looks pretty good. I'll leave that as it is. I'm going to change the join to rounded, and I'll, I'll change the cap to rounded as well. And then I'll click off of it to deselect everything. And you see, as you can see, we've pretty much uh, we've finished. We've created our double-sided arrow graphic using Inkscape. So that's how you could go about doing that. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.